Wildcats against the 25th ranked Louisville Cardinals. And welcome to Louisville, Kentucky. I'm Carter Blackburn with Rod Gilmore on this extra large kickoff weekend after the full day of college football action on Saturday. This is Sunday college football, taking you all the way through Monday with a big one left in the ACC between Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. This Louisville Cardinal team, Rod, has a 25 next to their name. There's lots of big expectations around this team, not only to win the Big East, but to be kind of a banner carrier for this league. I think that's right. It's been a tough weekend for the Big East. They really haven't been part of the national discussion, and they need to have a team step up in their conference and get something done. And Louisville, as the top-ranked team out of the Big East, seems to be that one. And Charlie Strong acknowledges that. He knows that a Big East team, in order to get to the national discussion, has to do something. And they may, in fact, have the next big thing on their team in quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. We saw him last season as a freshman quarterback. From week one to week 12, he became incredibly different. He matured as a quarterback. He's incredibly talented. He's big. He's strong. He can run. He can throw. But he's learned the quarterback position. He's running and managing this team. And we've been so impressed with the way he's learned to grind. He may be the next big thing in college football. It sounds like a rivalry. It looks like a rivalry. But the problem for the Kentucky Wildcats, Rod, is after five straight bowl games, they had a losing season last year. The excitement level is down around Wildcat football. What can this team do to get it back in 2012? Well, how about score some points? You know, that's the issue for this team. And when they had it going, they had the right idea. Throw the ball around, be different in the SEC, and be exciting. They didn't have that last season. They didn't score. They had poor quarterback play. And that's the key this year. Max Smith takes over at quarterback. He's a sophomore. He's not incredibly experienced, but he has been on the field some. He's a big, strong, drop-back quarterback. We may also see Morgan Newton out there as well. He was a starter last year. But the key is the quarterback play and pushing the football down the field. If you want to excite the Kentucky fans, they've got to score points. Well, the fans in blue, the fans in red are sitting through the rain for the gun. That surrounds the field. It seems to be absorbing the water pretty well. I talked to both coaches about how these conditions might impact their offensive game plan, and both of them said it won't. In fact, Joker Phillips told me that he started to have his guys practice with slick gloves to emulate the conditions that they might face, but he decided against it because he didn't want it in their minds that the weather might impact them. And in fact, uh, also so Charlie Strong, he said, if you do see them running the ball a little bit more, it has nothing to do with the conditions. It has everything to do with the fact that he feels like they can exploit Kentucky's defense with their run game. So, so far, so good from both of these sidelines. Rod, most people think that rain is going to affect a football game, running, passing. Is there much effect because of rain? Yeah, rain doesn't bother the receivers or the quarterback. It's wind. Wind is the problem for the passing attack. A wet field and rain bothers the pass rush, and it actually bothers defensive backs more than it bothers an offense. Local won the toss, defers to the second half, so Kentucky will receive the Governor's Cup matchup between the Kentucky Wildcats and the Louisville Cardinals. John Wallace's kickoff into the end zone, which means Kentucky gets it at the 20 five-yard line. That's the new touchback distance on kickoffs in college football this year. So here is Max Smith, the sophomore from Granada Hills, California. Very lightly recruited out of Granada Hills. Other programs didn't want him as a quarterback, so Max Smith sent a recruiting tape to the University of Kentucky. The staff saw that tape after signing day, asked him to walk on in the spring of 2011. Essentially gray shirt, scholarship became available, and now as a sophomore, Max Smith is the starting quarterback for the Kentucky Wildcats. Hoshik Williams gets the first down handoff, stood up by Preston Brown. Now, Carter, Smith is not a very experienced quarterback. He, he gets the start here tonight, but in high school, he didn't really run a passing attack. So he hasn't thrown the football as much as your typical high school quarterback who comes in and becomes a starter. So he's got a long way to go as a drop back quarterback. 
Won the quarterback battle over Morgan Newton. We expect to see both today. Smith heaves that one dangerously, but it's complete. Daryl Collins, the redshirt freshman from Gadsden, Alabama, makes the grab. And Joker Phillips is committed to putting the ball in the air. That's the number one thing on his to-do list with this offense, is to get back to throwing the ball the way Kentucky used to under Tim Couch. That's Williams on first down. Positive game, maybe a yard on first down for Koshik Williams, a senior former walk-on for Kentucky. You know, Smith is a, a big quarterback. He's not the most mobile guy. They will move him a little bit, but he's much better as a dropback guy. Williams next to Smith on second and eight. Smith pumps. Hit as he throws. A wobbler falls incomplete at the 35. Chance to look at the starting lineup for this Kentucky offense. Ranked 118 out of 120 in college football last year. Cats need a playmaker. Senior wideout Larod King, the most likely candidate. On the offensive line, ground game will follow right guard Larry Warford. 6'3", 343. Third and eight. Smith pressured but complete for a first down and there's LaRod King the guy they need to emerge into a Randall Cobb type receiver for Kentucky. Well he's not quite a Cobb guy he doesn't change direction very well but he's a big target 6'4 222 a possession receiver and he picks up the first down on a nice out move. Kentucky moving the football against Louisville on the opening drive. Sanders and Williams both in the backfield with Max Smith the sophomore quarterback. Throwing again on first and ten. Deep ball intended for Collins is incomplete. There in coverage, Adrian Bouchelle, the fifth-year senior from Texas. And a chance to look at the Louisville defense. Van, Vance Bedford's aggressive D. Ten starters back, including defensive end Marcus Smith and his five-and-a-half sacks. Linebacker group led by Preston Brown. 84 tackles a year ago. Akeem Smith, strong safety. Smith completes. Williams out of the backfield. Close to a lateral, but it goes for about two yards. Kentucky is a heavy, heavy screen team. Wide receiver screens, screens to the running backs. Tight end in the flat. The short, quick passing game. Not quite the downfield game, but third down here. They're going to need a downfield throw. Third and seven. Smith rolling, throwing to the 40, well short of the first down. It's Darrell Collins again, and the Cardinals rally to the football to stop the Kentucky drive, and some drawing. Joker Phillips jumps right in the middle of it to try and separate the Cardinals and the Cats. Yeah, you know, you got a rivalry game, and you have a rivalry that's been dominated by Louisville lately, and you almost get the sense that Kentucky hasn't engaged in the rivalry. I mean, there's the aggressive play. And then you have 16 King coming in with the shot at the end and you're going to get retaliation. But Kentucky fans even seem to be kind of ho-hum the last couple games. They didn't sell their full ticket allotment for this game. A lot of tickets turned back to the University of Louisville season. Ticket sales are down for Kentucky football. Again, after a losing season ending the bowl streak. And a penalty flag is down. Looked like the clock ran out before the freshman punter. Delay of game, off. offense, number nine. Penalty is five yards. Still fourth down. You see, I don't get that. If you have a rival, your rival is in everything. I mean, not just in football, in basketball and whatnot. And I would think that it would go through the culture. Can you imagine Alabama, Auburn folks turning back tickets? Absolutely not. No way. And, and that's Ohio State, Michigan? And that's kind of the point of both sides of this. In fact, Charlie Strong said... The rivalry's not there right now because there's a 25 next to Louisville's name and Kentucky, although there's a great deal of respect between these two head coaches, says it, it is it is not a football rivalry right now between these two programs. You gotta win some. Fumble the football. 
Recovered near the goal line. The back judge says it is just inside the one yard line where Louisville will take possession of the football. Red. Let's go back to the very beginning of this drive, that punt and the halo roll ball. Yeah, the halo roll. What we didn't notice, what I didn't notice, that ball hit the ground before it got to return man, and the halo rule doesn't go into effect only when the ball's in the air. Here's your fourth down. Here's fourth down. Wright gets the handoff. Wright has a first down. It will be first and goal, Louisville, as the Cardinals convert on fourth down. Jeremy Wright pounds his way behind the right guard, Jake Smith, and the fullback, Nick Heiser. 15 plays in this drive. Fourth down, pounding it. A lot of confidence. You mentioned that salty offensive line athletic as well overpowering this Kentucky front so far seven carries 29 yards on the drive for right he will get it again on first and goal and he is in for the touchdown a 15 play touchdown drive for the Louisville Cardinals 99 yards on the opening drive of 2012 that's a pretty good way to come out of camp have your offense backed up have your quarterback hit a big third down play and then have your offensive line just grind it out Cardinals go for two and convert what a statement drive by the Louisville Cardinals. 99 yards on 15 plays with a touchdown. And then two more points on the conversion. 25th ranked Louisville. Firing to start in the Governor's Cup matchup against Kentucky. What a in soggy Louisville, Kentucky, the Governor's Cup is on the line and already an 8-0 start for the Louisville Cardinals against the Kentucky Wildcats. Carter Blackburn, Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill, a 15-play, 99-yard touchdown drive for Louisville, a two-point conversion, and already Kentucky is down 8-0 with less than three minutes to go in the first quarter. Quite an opening statement by Louisville. But a 16-play drive, Teddy Bridgewater quarterback. DeMarco Robinson manages to haul it in, but appears to be short of the first down. Well, Teddy Bridgewater engineering that drive for the Louisville offense, but 49 rushing yards on the drive as well for the Cardinals. Third three for Kentucky. Smith on the screen complete Williams spins away first down Kentucky Koshik Williams picks it up ridden out of bounds near midfield by Hakeem Smith the Wildcats convert to move the chains a nice move by Williams hit and spin out of the tackle that's what you're taught when you get hit spin away from it and that got him the first down the former walk-on has stepped in for Josh Clemens Appears to be an injured Cardinal. We'll let you know who that is as soon as we can take a look. Looks like Terrell Johns Cardinal Stadium. And before first down, a flag is thrown. Was Terrell Floyd the injured corner for Louisville? Andrew Johnson takes his place. And he is still on the sideline. Although he appears to be anxious to get back. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 19 on the offense. Penalty is five yards. Go first down. Yeah, I'm so intrigued with the Louisville defense and and how they play their safeties or safety. They really like to protect the deep part of the field. They believe in keeping a guy in the middle at all times. And they also believe in blitzing from every direction. That's the calling card of defensive coordinator Vance Bedford. It was with Charlie Strong at Florida. Dragging Raymond Sanders. The third is wrestled down after a gain of four yards. Middle linebacker Preston Brown, the Cincinnati native, Northwest High School there on the stop. 
So Akeem Smith was in the safety spot that time. He was about 18 yards deep. And most teams will not play their safety that deep. But Vance Brown, their deep coordinator, said he'd play him deeper. Smith, quick hitter on second and 11. That means we're quickly to third and 11. There was a uh, Larry Warford threw a Louisville defender well after that play was over with the flag. You play your safety deep when you play a lot of pressure and you want to clean up everything else out there. If you're going to have him there and you're going to circle up man-man over there, you want to make sure that if something goes wrong, you've got help deep. Third and 11 for the Cats. Smith, check down man, dragging McCaskill, sprints for the first down, Wildcats convert again, so on third down now, Kentucky is three of four. Although the line judge and the referee are getting together. Number 11, that penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. B.J. DuBose was offsides. Kentucky takes the first down to the 41. Smith is being very composed even though there's pressure coming. I mean, he's doing a nice job of staying with the play and buying a little time. Max Smith, the sophomore quarterback from Granada Hills, California. Check down again. Sanders has it. Sanders inside the 30. First down, Kentucky. Less than a minute to go in the first. It takes a lot of patience to throw a check down. A lot of big, strong quarterbacks want to show off that arm. But Smith is being patient and letting the guys take the little three-yard pass and get yardage. 10 for 13, 80 yards for Smith. Handing off to Williams on first down, dropped by Preston Brown. Hurry up for second down for Kentucky. Louisville and the defender running off late. Bylon wasn't sure whether he was supposed to be on the field or not, so Kentucky goes hurry up. Can time Louisville out. has to use a Louisville. timeout. 15 seconds left in the first quarter. This is second down and nine for Max Smith and Kentucky. Yeah, Smith just saw the blitz, saw it being tipped. Here comes the blitz. Kentucky picks it up. Smith has time. Now he'll go scrambling. Smith dives to the 20, which will mean third down coming up. But that will be the first play of the second quarter. Louisville has a 99-yard eight. Kentucky nothing as we start the second quarter. What does that play selection tell you, Rob? Well, it tells me that we're getting exactly what Joker Phillips said. Kentucky's going old school. They're going to throw the ball as much as possible. And Louisville believes they're a little bit more powerful running the ball. And we begin the second quarter with third down inside the Louisville 25. Sophomore quarterback Max Smith from the shotgun. With pressure coming on the edge. Smith throws that direction, finds Williams for a first down inside the Louisville 20. Well, the game plan for Kentucky has been to get the ball out quick against his pressure, use the running backs in the passing attack. Because getting the ball deep is not likely with the deep safety playing 15 to 20 yards deep almost every play. That's hurry up in the red zone. Smith, quick hitter. Robinson, inside the 15. Relying on yards after the catch. Getting Koshik Williams getting DeMarco Robinson the football and making them make a guy miss. Williams on the handoff. Inside the 10, about a yard short of the first down. So third and one coming up inside the Louisville 10. And they're controlling the substitution with no huddle. Third and one, screen to the outside, complete for a first down. It'll be first and goal, Kentucky. Larod King takes it to the one. It's the tempo that has an impact. Now you see the substitutions. Now you see Kentucky change and Louisville trying to get their guys on the field. That's a pretty long run for the Louisville folks to get out there since they're on the far side of the field. 
but tempo has been controlled by Kentucky on this drive. They're, it's their answer to the Louisville long drive. On first and goal from the one. Play action. Smith throws. Caught. Touchdown, Kentucky. Tyler Robinson hauls it in. And the Wildcats answer the long Louisville touchdown drive with a 15-play drive of their own. Tempo. They rushed to the line of scrimmage, did not give Louisville time to identify the set, and quickly got their tight end, Tyler Robinson, into the end zone. McIntosh's PAT is good. It's eight or 23 yards. There were some big performances over the weekend. I'm saying Geno Smith is a Heisman contender, Heisman finalist right now. He wasn't alone. Teddy Bridgewater hoping to join those players of note. He completes to Nate Nord on first down, pickup of about nine. Here's some of the other notable performances from this weekend, beginning with Le'Veon Bell. That looks like a Heisman moment right there, leaping over a Boise State defender. There's your guy, Geno Smith. He was big over the weekend. 69 points on the board for West Virginia over Marshall. Lattimore, a good performance on Thursday. Started it all off for the weekend, and this is the big one. How about Sam Gurley? Eureka! 7.36, a new NCAA single game record. Not just the 7.36, but that game went down to the last 20 seconds. They needed every one of those five touchdowns, 736 yards with the Red Devils of Eureka. Jeremy Wright gets the handoff on second and short and moves the chains to the 33. You know, uh, Eureka, you know, that's Ronald Reagan's alma mater. I did broad. I knew, Come on. I knew you were on that Come one. on. But, you know, those weren't the only guys that had some big performance. How about uh, Marquise Lee at SC? He was not even listed on the original Belenikoff watch list. How do you make that mistake? T.J. Yeldon coming out party for Alabama as well. Over oh. 100 rushing yards in that blowout win. Get your thoughts on that in a moment, Rod. Bridgewater handing off again to Wright. Speaking about Alabama, Michigan, more impressive the Alabama offense or the Alabama defense? Well, for me, it was the Alabama defense. I, I expected the Alabama offense to do well against Michigan. That offensive line is outstanding. But to see that young defense play that way, that well together in the first game of the season, <laughs> from the rest of the SEC, I'm not real happy right now. Michigan just 69 rushing yards to Alabama's 232. High backfield behind Teddy Bridgewater here. Play action for the sophomore QB from Miami. Heaves it downfield, incomplete, intended for Andrell Smith. Third and seven coming up. That first, is Bridgewater's first incompletion. First time he's hesitated. He had that one early, but he, he double pumped. He held on a little bit and patted the ball one more time. And I think that, that hesitancy affected the throw there. That's the first time he just didn't go after it as he saw it. This is just the second possession by Louisville. Even though we're rolling under 12 minutes in the second quarter. 99-yard touchdown drive the first time. Bridgewater on third down over the middle. Complete for a first down into Kentucky territory. Eli Rogers, the sophomore from Miami Northwestern High School who came with Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy said they're like brothers, known each other since they were six years old, basically lived together in high school and came to the University of Louisville to play together. And every quarterback has a guy he's got a lot of confidence in, but not many stay with the guy since he was six years old. I mean, that's a lot of trust and confidence. Michael Lee Harris, who was injured also from Northwestern High School in Miami, a big reason why both of those guys are here. There he takes the first down handoff. Sonoris Perry bounces it outside, inside the 40, and Sonoris Perry will run away from the Wildcats for a Louisville touchdown. 47 yards. Credit Jared Davis with a big block on Martavius Nellums to spring Sonoris Perry, the junior from Georgia. I think they had their eyes closed. I think the Kentucky defenders 
have their eyes closed. They didn't see him. The first Louisville drive takes 15 plays. This one just six as Perry delivers the big blow. Oh, you cannot assume the guy is down. Perry sneaks to the outside. Watch the Kentucky defender. They run right by him. They didn't even know. I think they had their eyes closed. Kentucky D. Yeah. One that apparently lost vision on that last play with Perry sneaking out to the right side. This is just the 25th meeting between these two. They went 70 years without playing from 1924 to 1994. Since the resumption, Louisville leads 10 to 8. They won last year in Lexington. And a 15-7 lead right now for Louisville. John Wallace will kick off. Williams and Sanders back for Kentucky. Williams will bring it out of the end zone. Williams across the 25 to the 34. We check in with Reese. Carter time for Sport 10. Today he's 19 under and clearing the way for everybody. Here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, Kentucky gets the football back. Touchdown drive on their last possession. Max Smith, play action. First down, incomplete. We check in with Jamel. Yeah, guys, after that last series against Kentucky, uh, defensive line coach Clint Hurt laid into the D-line. He said, I don't care if you're tired, and if you are, what are you here for? you got to get out there and make a play. So he was very animated. be interesting to see how they respond. Well, the story for this Kentucky defense was... If they didn't get better up front, then they were going to get run on throughout the season. And Louisville is taking advantage. On first down, that's complete to the tight end, Ronnie Shields. Well, you know it's tiring for that defensive line? These short passes. I mean, you run at the quarterback, and then you got to run back and try and chase down a running back who's only five or eight yards away from you. It's a shuttle run constantly, and these guys are getting worn out with it. Smith's pass appeared to be tipped. It's incomplete. Reminder coming up next. NASCAR just two races left until the chase. Carl Edwards, Kyle Busch, and Jeff Gordon trying to get in wild card position for the chase. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series in Atlanta is coming up next. Let's see how uh, Tony Stewart, if he is running in the red again this weekend, or if maybe uh, some chamomile tea calling him down over the week. I got my NASCAR app working now. 6.30 Eastern from Atlanta following us. Landon Foster on the punt for Kentucky. Good punt from Foster, the freshman. Radcliffe, fair catches near the six. Long touchdown drive the first two times for Teddy Bridgewater and Lou. 99 yards and 85 yards. And the sophomore quarterback from Miami's Northwestern High School, Teddy Bridgewater, last year's Big East Rookie of the Year, takes it from inside his own ten. Handing off to Wright on first down, Jeremy Wright, the junior from Claremont, Florida, with a solid gain on first down. Two long, productive drives for the Cardinals. Well, if you're going to have bad field position, you at least want to be able to do something with it. And, and they have really done a nice job with the long drives and control the football. So Bridgewater and the Cardinals taking it from inside their own 10 to start this drive. Second and three already with two wide. Right again on second down. He is stuck short, bringing up third down. Oh, well, Brad, there's a 25 next to Louisville's name. They are ranked. They are the only team who is in the Big East, Big East, who is ranked right now. How important is it for the Big East Conference for Louisville to have a solid 2012 season? It's not a good weekend for the Big East, but right now, Louisville's got to find a way to get this first down or the Big East is going to be looking a little bit worse off. 
because there's momentum there for Kentucky. But, yeah. but after this play, let's pick it up. That's a good question. Bridgewater out of the pistol on third and four. Complete first down. Copeland makes the grab. Louisville moves the chains, and now we can talk about Louisville the Big East. So Pitt loses. Right. Syracuse loses. And Boise State, which will join the Big East next year, off. So not a great weekend for the Big East. So how do you make some noise? If, if Louisville is the best that you have, and Louisville isn't dominant, then the Big East is essentially irrelevant. I think the Big East is going to have to make a move. They're talking about bringing in a 14th member. I think you had a, a suggestion, an idea. I, and I agree with you. If you can't get Notre Dame, go get BYU. Provo, Utah right now. That's a... Uh I think BYU makes a lot of sense. I mean, that at Boise State and San Diego State. Bridgewater rolling and throwing and completing. That is Devontae Parker. Uh, Mike Oresco, the new commissioner of the Big East, saying recently they are looking at adding a, four, a, a 14th team. So it, it's really confusing to keep up with all of this moving around. West Virginia is in the Big 12. Remember, TCU was... Uh, going to go to the Big East. Now TCU is in the Big 12. There's been rumblings about other schools, including UConn, including Louisville, potentially looking for new conference home. So the challenge for Mike Oresco in the Big East is to keep that league together, try and keep this football league progressive. Flag down as Bridgewater goes scrambling to near the 50. We'll check that flag here in a moment. Well, you can't keep losing programs like Pitt, Syracuse, West Virginia, TCU. Holding number 55 on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Replay first down. You, you lose programs like that and you try and replace them with programs that don't have the same cachet and you cease to be relevant. You're you're sliding down the scale. You're closer to Conference USA than you are to the Big Five. So you got to get a marquee program. And if you can't convince Notre Dame, I'd give BYU whatever it took to bring them to the conference. Now remember, before the 14 playoff begins two years from now in 2014, you're still in the BCS system with the automatic qualifier, which means the Big East representative, whether it's the Louisville Cardinals, the Cincinnati Bearcats, the South Florida Bulls, whomever it is, that team is going to be playing in a BCS bowl. So that, and that's gonna be the case for the next two years, including when Boise State is in the Big East in 2013, as Sonoris Perry Fights through a couple of hard hits to move the chains. But the Big East, if it's going to have any cachet and any credibility, they need whoever that champion is, that AQ, going to a BCS game, to be a program that is solid and can compete with a team out of the ACC, the Pac-12, the Big 12, Big 10. They can't simply be a 3-4 loss team that gets blown out in the BCS bowl game. Louisville shared the Big East Championship last year. West Virginia, the representative in the Orange Bowl. Bridgewater goes scrambling again on second down. We check in with Jamel. Yeah, recruiting has definitely been a, a big component of this Big East shakeup. And Charlie Strong said recruits have been asking him about that already. And all he's told him is, hey, it doesn't matter where we are. We're still going to be a, a good program regardless. So it says something that, uh, you know, his recruits are following this as much as they have been enough to ask him about it and how it might impact their futures. Well, Louisville's done everything they can facilities-wise, building-wise. It's become a big-time program really across all sports, terrific facilities, so they're, they're well positioned no matter what happens. The Big East would certainly like them to position themselves as a power in this league, especially football. Bridgewater to throw on third down. Teddy Bridgewater finds time, completes. That's Devontae Parker to the Kentucky 35. Knocked out of bounds by Fred Tiller, the true freshman. But there's the matchup. Parker receiver against the true freshman. And just a little flick of the wrist, almost like Michael Vick. You see the way it, he just flicks the ball out there like a dart. He's got a strong arm. He's accurate. But that little flick is something you rarely see in a quarterback. And you don't have any problem with that with that flick. Not when you're that accurate with it. <laughs> <laughs> When you can hit it like that, you can flick it all you want. Yeah, when you're 9 of 10 for 130, throw it. A lot of natural ability for Teddy Bridgewater. And now as a sophomore, he's beginning to match it with knowledge of the offense. Play action. Pressure. Bridgewater completes. 
near a first down again with two defenders right in his face. You notice there's no panic in him. He keeps his eyes down the field. And it's a young quarterback. Watch his immediate reaction. He does not stress and go, oh, I got to run out of this. Eyes down the field, and he makes a play. That's quarterback. That is winning from the pocket. Winning with your arm, not with your feet. That's understanding where your guys are going to be, what the play is, and what you can do. Seven different receivers. So Bridgewater has completed ten passes to seven different receivers. Cardinals bring two backs, two tight ends. Harry gets the handoff inside the 15. First and 10 Louisville from the Kentucky 14-yard line. You get these guys pulling up in here. You got to make sure that somebody gets up in their way. But they almost get all the way. So look at the hole that's there. There is a huge lane with the linemen pulling around and a fullback, and they had nobody there. Perry had 27 rushing yards last year. He has 67 in the first half of game number one in 2012. Right out of the eye, inside the 10, into the end zone, touchdown Louisville. The Cardinals are three for three. Three possessions, three touchdowns. They're just gassing them right now. They are gashing them with the power pulling the offside guard. Here comes big number 70, John Miller, leading the way, driving out the linebacker, Tyler Browsey. It's just not even competitive up there right now. They are just gashing them at the line of scrimmage. PAT is good. Teddy Bridgewater and the Louisville offense celebrate three for three on touchdown drives. Like the fight song says, fight on Cardinals. Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Thankfully, the rain has gone away indeed. Williams on the return for Kentucky. Koshik Williams across the 30 to near the 35. Well, Louisville trying to change a recent trend of disappointing starters in uh, recent years, including 2010 when Kentucky beat Louisville. And then last year, the loss to Florida International, 24-17. They lost to Florida International. They lost to Marshall. They lost to North Carolina. Lost to Cincinnati. This was a, a Louisville team that was 2-4 and four at the beginning of last year. Williams gets the first down handoff to near midfield. Now the Cardinals were able to rally. They ended up seven and six, went to a bowl game, shared the Big East title after that slow start. Yeah, but Charlie Strong said they don't talk about sharing the title. Williams gets it on first down. Kentucky goes up tempo, and they're going to try and establish the run game with Koshik Williams. Well, they're trying to change the tempo completely, and you can run a little bit different. Now they've got a guy down, and that's Koshik Williams. That's going to slow them down, obviously and maybe hurt them even more. Williams has been a big part of not just the rushing attack, but the passing attack, the short throws. Backfield, how important is this drive for Kentucky, Rod? Biggest drive of the game for Kentucky now. They've got to answer. They're in danger of getting, getting in a bad way here. Smith to throw on second and one. It's dropped by Tyler Robinson, the tight end who had the touchdown grab earlier. So third and one. Their defense is getting knocked around by Louisville's offense. Their offense has got to respond and get some points and give the defense a chance to catch their breath. Third and one for the Cats. Newton in a QB. Newton will take it for a first down. Fumbles the football. He appears to get back on top. That's Morgan Newton who's now the Wildcat quarterback for Kentucky. He and Smith battled for that starting quarterback position that Max Smith won, but they go to Newton in short yardage. Max Smith back out there to quarterback on first and 10. Handing off to Sanders. Raymond Sanders, the third, fumbles the football. Louisville recovers. Cardinal football as the Cats were driving inside the 25. I thought he was down. 
And the officials may confer here. One official did appear to point that he was Wait. down, but the football is going to go to Louisville. Yeah. yeah I saw the official point, but that ball may have come out before he went down. There's balls out. He's not on the ground. That's a good call. That's a really good call. Andrew Johnson recovers the fumble for Louisville. First turnover for either side. Yeah, no question about it at all. That football is out before Sanders hits the ground. Big turnover for Kentucky. Two times in a row they put the ball on the ground there. They got it back once, but not that time. And now they're in danger. Their defense, they've got to be gassed. They were gashed by the run. They got to be tired. And now they come right back out here. Louisville has 141 rushing yards, three possessions, three touchdowns for the Cardinals. So Sanders, who comes into the game for the injured Koshik Williams, fumbles, gives the football back to Teddy Bridgewater and the Louisville offense. Bridgewater again finds the check down, man. Jeremy Wright for a positive gain on first down. Sunday night baseball tonight, a huge one. The first place in the AL Central is on the line. Sale versus Verlander. White Sox versus Tigers. Sunday night baseball presented by Taco Bell tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 tonight. Sunday night baseball. It's starting to get interesting in the baseball races, yes, huh? Yes, indeed it is. For Sale goes to the White Sox, Justin Verlander for the Tigers. Max Scherzer, stellar for the Tigers yesterday. Wright takes it on first down as we check in with Reese. I was shocked a little bit there, Carter. That's the hardest hit I've seen. A Kentucky defense. That was Reese who was calling you out, by the way. Bridgewater completes. Andrell Smith. He hits the ground hard. I don't think Reese has to worry about a big hit, though. No. Oh, I still wouldn't want Mr. Cobble chasing Reese down in the studio. <laughs> Louisville goes up tempo. Bridgewater pressured, and Teddy Bridgewater will take the sack. And guess who? Mr. Cobble gets the sack on Bridgewater. You call him Mr. when he's six foot three twenty-eight. He is from Louisville Central High School. That's his actual name. Seen so far. And Oregon's much improved defense this year as well under Nick Aliotti, led by Dion Jordan. At defensive end, not really tested by Arkansas State in the opener. And something to keep an eye on for the Ducks. Perry takes it on second down, and he is dropped as the Kentucky D starts to get a push. Alvin Bud Dupree. Ohio beating Penn State. That, it looks like a shocker, like a huge upset. Ohio is a quality football team in Alabama, all over Michigan. Yeah, they may be better than people realize in Alabama. Bridgewater on third down. Fumbles the football. Louisville recovers, but it's fourth down from the 45. So the Cardinal offense that was perfect on the first three drives begins to stumble here. The yeah, incomplete pass or fumble. Yeah, that is a fumble. That ball comes out before his arm starts going forward. As he was trying to get deep, just slipped out. You know, he wears a glove on his hand. Even good weather, uses a glove. But he lost contact with that one. That was a fumble. Collins Uku is the guy who got the pressure on Teddy Bridgewater there. So for the first time, Louisville punts. New punter, a freshman, Josh Appleby from Athens, Alabama. Hits it right around the 45. But Marco Robinson lets it hit. Now Robinson fields it and pays the price. Lorenzo Molden hammers to Marco Robinson. No halo rule in effect. Remember we saw that earlier, that ball bounced. So once the ball bounces, you are completely vulnerable. You don't get the halo protection. Does Kentucky think about scoring here, or do you just... Uh... You, really? Really? <laughs> really? The answer is... <laughs> No, of course yeah. they don't. <laughs> Kentucky fans aren't happy about that. Louisville fans are happy about the 22-7 lead for the Cardinals on the Cats at the half. 
Louisville won last year after Kentucky won four straight meetings in this Governor's Cup series but Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals Three for three on their first three possessions. Here's Jamel Hill. Coach, you talked to our camp about Teddy Bridgewater's maturation. What have you seen from him today? Well, he's playing so well on offense right now. He's making all the red checks and making all the throws for us. And we get stopped there on that last drive, but we've had three drives where we went down and scored. Well, your defense at first, they gave up a little bit of yardage, especially to their running backs in the short passing game. How did they settle in and what clicked for them? We're, just, we're not playing good right now on defense. We're giving up the big plays. You know, they took their drive and drove it down, and then luckily we were able to get the ball back and cause a fumble. All right, thank you, Coach. Uh -huh. And yet Charlie Strong's team has a 22-7 lead on Kentucky. Teddy Bridgewater and the Cardinals in command at the half. Red and blue here in Louisville, Kentucky. We send you back to restate automatic qualifier from the Big East. So Louisville picked to win this league, Rod. Does Louisville look like a team who's going to win the Big East? I mean, it's one half in, but what do you think? Well, you know, I don't want to count South Florida out yet because I, I like that team with 25 seniors. But what I'm seeing from this team tonight, it's an athletic, fast team. They've got a good quarterback who could possibly be a great quarterback and a powerful running attack. I think there's a big upside. If this is a team that turns out to be the best in the Big East and they run their schedule, they've got a chance to be a pretty special team. But South Florida, I believe, will have something to say about that. That's a veteran team over there. And don't count out those Cincinnati Bearcats as well. Which oh, yeah. Is, uh, the Big East title last year. So here's the first half numbers. What stands out from Kentucky and Louisville? Well, the thing that jumps out, obviously, is the rushing yardage. You have a physical Louisville rushing attack that at times looked like Kentucky's defense either had their eyes closed or they just couldn't tackle, you know. So that's a problem. They're going to have to get that fixed. And here's an onside kick. To start the second half, and Kentucky appears to recover the onside kick. It is Kentucky football. Joker Phillips puts a charge into the Wildcats. Onside kick recovered. Joker Phillips deciding not business as usual. He's repeatedly talked about the need to spice things up, to get back to a different style of play than what they had last year. And coming out really aggressive, an onside kick, trying to get his squad back in it. Good move, I like it. Kentucky went to five straight bowl games in last year losing record missed out on a bowl trying to recapture some excitement in 2012 but on a corner blitz Terrell Floyd takes down Max Smith on the first play from scrimmage in the second half Look. aggressive defense here comes the offside corner blitz right in the face of Smith he didn't see it so Max Smith the sophomore QB for Kentucky facing second down and 17 after the sack by Floyd. Yeah, a big part of quarterback play is staying out of negative plays. Second and long, third and long really are hard to pick up. Smith incomplete to Williams. Let's check in with Jamel Hill. Yeah, guys, I talked to Joker Phillips right after halftime, and he just said, quite simply, his defense has got to get off the field at third down. They also have to take care of the ball on the offensive end. Wish he'd have let me know that uh, onside kick was coming. But beyond that, he said, quote, we just got to play. Well, congrats on shedding the umbrella in the second half as well. Third and 17. Smith pressured, completes anyway for a Kentucky first down. Big time throw oh, from Smith to Oh, Lord. man, was that big time. He had to thread that in there. King was not wide open. There were four or five defenders there. That's her to the line. Koshig Williams first down carry for about four. That was as big a third down as Kentucky's had. And you know why? It, the onside kick. You go onside kick, you can't go three and out after that. Number 92, five yard penalty, replay, second down. On third down, Max Smith, six for seven, 53 yards. This is first and five after the offside penalty. Kentucky takes the offside. Williams again. 
Williams to the 30. First down, Katz, as Kentucky tries to convert on this possession to begin the third quarter after the onside kick. B.J. DuBose is down for Louisville right now. Yeah, despite the rain, it's very humid today. A lot of guys think because of the rain, it's not that humid. They don't pound the fluids, but you can easily cramp up on a day like this. This is Kentucky versus Louisville, the Governor's Cup, although just the 25th meeting. Kentucky leads all time, but since the uh, series resumed in 1994, Louisville leads. Kentucky actually won four straight games in this rivalry until last year when Louisville went to Lexington and won 24 to 17. That was the game that Teddy Bridgewater became the Louisville quarterback. Came into the game for the injured Will Stein. Led Louisville to a win over Kentucky. He has emerged into not just the starting quarterback as a true sophomore, but a true star at quarterback for the Louisville Cardinals. This is Max Smith, the quarterback for Kentucky on first and ten. Smith pumps. Pass is knocked away and complete. That's Floyd. Nice job by Floyd. Simple man coverage. He got his hand in there and knocked it out. Yet another Floridian on this Louisville roster. He's from Fort Pierce, Florida. Charlie Strong, much of his coaching career in Florida, recruits heavily from Florida. Blitz coming. Picked up. Quick hitter complete. Although McCaskill gets popped as he makes the grab. Well, this is four down territory. And they go change of pace, hurry it up. Trying to catch him napping. Third and four. They identified the blitz and came out. Smith looked to the sideline after he recognized the blitz was coming. Here it comes. Is that a fumble or is it a pass? It appears to be a fumble, in which case Kentucky's going to get it all the way back at the 40. Marcus Smith forces the fumble of Max Smith, and the Wildcats throw it in reverse. Well, they knew the blitz was coming. I don't understand the problem here. They knew it was coming. They checked out of it, but didn't really adjust to it. They actually saw it and called a play for it. Now the hand. If the hand's moving forward, it ought to be an incomplete pass. In which case, it'd be fourth down and four. Yeah. The point of emphasis on the rule is that the doubt, the benefit of the doubt goes to the quarterback. The previous play in... is under further yeah. review. If the there's... ruling on the field is a backwards pass. Well, there may be the distinction. He may actually have thrown a pass, but it could be going backwards. Hand moving forward. Now, he's he's moving the hand forward, so that is a pass. If it is backwards, it would be a fumble. If it's forward, it would be an incomplete pass. You look at where he is on the field, and does that ball go backwards? It looked like he released it somewhere around the 34. And maybe it hit around the 34, 35. That's close. Can't really tell from that angle. But you look at where the ball was. Fourth down. So in that sense, they had to determine that the ball was released at the 34 and ended at the 34, slightly above the 34. So that's a difference of 16 yards, meaning fourth down and four, which means now the kicking team will come on. Craig McIntosh, the senior from Lexington Christian High School, 12 and 14 a year ago. A kicker who came to the University of Kentucky for ROTC. Walked on the football team as a sophomore. This is a 41-yard attempt from McIntosh, and he drills it. Correction. Missed it. By my eyes, I thought he had it. He did not. He just pushed it to the right. Plenty of leg, but he misses it to the right. Still 22-7 Louisville. 
power was very bad introduced it a few years ago originating with Chris all the yep. battle with a big opening weekend win over the Cal Bears yeah spoiled Cal celebration of their new new facility Teddy Bridgewater 13 for 14 now completed nine straight Quick drop on second and two. Now Teddy Bridgewater will scramble, will throw and complete. There's Damian Copeland for a first down. How big a play is that? How advanced a play is that for a true sophomore quarterback? Well, the thing that's impressive is that he his head is always up, his eyes are down the field. Now, good catch, bad catch. He's having a foot in, yeah, he drags that right foot. I only need one foot in even college though, football. Even though it's a Sunday, it's still just one foot. Still one foot. Nice. Eyes are the fullback. Snores Perry behind him. Perry tries the cutback. Gets to the 46. We check in with Reese. Started his Taco Bell studio update. Alabama State Bethune Cookman and former Georgia player Isaiah Crowell, who has kicked off the team, now playing for Alabama State. Greg Jenkins is picked off by the Wood Lane, and look what happens to Crowell, number one. Hello, Isaiah. That didn't happen in Georgia. Crowell's okay. He got lit up. Bethune Cookman won it 38 28. That's still the biggest offseason acquisition in the SWAC. Play action on second down for Bridgewater, completing to the 40. That's Devontae Parker. We heard from Lou Holtz at halftime. Both of these head coaches worked for Lou Holtz in 2002 at South Carolina and Columbia. Joker Phillips was on the offensive side. Charlie Strong was on the defensive side of the football with Coach Holtz in South Carolina. They were neighbors, and they're good friends. And Charlie Strong has a lot of compassion for the pressure that Joker Phillips is under. Two programs who appear to be heading in different directions in 2012. On first down, this is Perry. To the 24. Let's check in with Jamel. Yeah, to add on to that story there, guys. Uh, Quite honestly, uh, Charlie Strong, he said that he thought what was happening, all the criticism to Joker Phillips, it was completely unfair and that it takes some time to build a program, particularly when you're in the SEC. In fact, his exact quote was, if I took my team to the SEC, they'd be talking about me the same way. Here's Bridgewater on first and ten, scrambling, rolling, throwing it out of bounds and incomplete with the Kentucky Defender getting a hand on it. Ben. Well, the reality of the business now is that there is no patience. And Joker Phillips has, has had this program, and they've been in bowl games. And now all of a sudden, last year, the offense took a big dip, and he's getting a lot of heat, and ticket sales are down this year. So there's a lot of pressure. And you think week one? Week one folks are talking about, is there's a hot seat? That's the reality. That's the reality of college football. Now. Took over for Rich Brooks, who really had it going there for Kentucky. Hey, went to four straight bowl games at the end of Rich Brooks' tenure. Joker takes over, bowl game in year one, losing record in year two. And the lack of offensive excitement in production, a big part of that. Bridgewater completes on second down. It will be first and 10 from the 13. Jared Davis makes the grab. You know, Joker Phillips was one of the few coaches in waiting that actually ended up taking the job so he's been there he was rich brooks handpicked guy to succeed in the they did finish fifth in the sec east in each of the first two seasons under joker phillips even though they went to a bowl game two years ago first down bridgewater completes again this is scott radcliffe the tight end making the grab and Joker Phillips is Kentucky football through and through. Played for the Wildcats in the 80s. Has been at Kentucky, part of the coaching staff since 2003. Well, I think he's got the right idea. They have to be different in the SEC. They can't line up and just run over the other SEC teams. Meanwhile, Louisville on the march again. Jeremy Wright takes it outside, right to the six. Third down coming up for the Cardinals from the Kentucky six-yard line. But what Kentucky may have to do is recruit a little broader. Instead of taking the guys that 
aren't going to Tennessee, Alabama, you know, LSU from the Georgia and, and, and Alabama areas. Maybe they need to recruit Ohio a little bit more. Uh, Louisville certainly pulled a lot of talent out of Florida, as we've documented, including Teddy Bridgewater, the quarterback, who turns and hands to another Floridian, Jeremy Wright, who is brought down from behind at the four. Fourth down coming up. Nice tackle by Alvin Bud Dupree, sophomore from Georgia. Kicking unit comes on. This will be John Wallace, the new kicker for the Louisville Cardinals. First attempt. Actually, a pretty good hold by the Kentucky defense to keep Louisville out of the end zone. If they come out of this with just a field goal, they are still just a couple of possessions down. 22-yard attempt is good from Wallace. He is perfect kicking in his Louisville career. 17 unanswered for the Cardinals in a 25-7 Sunday lead. 17 unanswered points from the Cardinals after Cats in the Cards went back-to-back -back long drives to make this a one-point game in the first quarter. Louisville has taken command. Kentucky gets the football, trying to get it back. Josh Appleby to Koshik Williams. To about the 27. Did you notice that kickoff coverage by Louisville? I'm not a fan of that. You know, the new rule says that you have to be within five yards. You can't have more than a five-yard running start. Watch what they do. They take a lateral start, so they're actually moving, but they are within five yards. So technically, they don't violate the rule. But the idea of the rule was to cut down on the high-speed momentum. And if you just get that momentum going laterally, you're really kind of violating the spirit of the rule. But you're not violating the rule. It's not a penalty. I, I, I would suggest that the interpretation and enforcement would need to change. Something for the rules committee perhaps to take a look at. I would suggest that. Uh, following the letter of the law, right? Counselor? Which is why you should also, with the rule, set forth the rationale and policy. The idea is we want to reduce high-speed collisions. We don't want you to have a five, more than a five-yard running start. That has gone from a five-yard running start to about a 15-yard running start. Momentum getting you going. You also, as Smith and the Cats have second down here, no thought on that kickoff. Smith looks to the sideline. Five seconds, four seconds. Smith finally gets it. And he will take the sack at the 25. Pass protection has been shaky. They've had trouble identifying blitzers. And when they identify them, they can't get to them. It's all the pressure coming off the edge on the right side. B.J. Butler gets the sack. Third and long. Hakeem Smith safety. He's going to drop back to about 20 yards deep. He's already at 15. Protecting the deep ball. It's tipped and incomplete. Floyd knocks it away from Robinson. Kentucky will have to punt. Ball was off the mark. Robinson, not the tallest receiver at about 5'9 out there, but he had no shot at that one. Really good coverage by Floyd. Well, Cats go three and out on their second possession of the third quarter. Second three and out of the game for Kentucky. Fake! Foster dragged down. A good 13 yards short of the first down. Flag is down. Yeah, on the celebration. Yeah, it looks like it may be a face mask call. If it is, that may save them here because that was an awfully risky play. Almost born of desperation, but watch the end of it. There is... I'm not sure that's a face mask. It was at the end. It looked like at the beginning he reached up and got the shoulder. 
And then at the end, it looks like the hand slid up. I thought there could have been a flag on the celebration. Kenny Carter, the uh, boisterous special teams coordinator oh, yeah. for Louisville, was out there on the field. And... After the play was over, unsportsmanlike on Louisville. There you go. Penalty is 15 yards. It will be Louisville ball, first down. Uh, Charlie Strong was upset. Now watch for the face mask again. There's the reach, grab. And he got some face mask and let go and then got the upper collar, but he started at the face mask. And it wasn't called, but the celebration penalty was called on Louisville after change of possession. Again, that's the special teams coordinator who was out there celebrating with his guys. That's Kenny Carter, excited about the way his team reacted to the fake. Yep. But 15-yard penalty, Kentucky gets the football back. Correct, Louisville football. After the play was over, so Louisville football, it's Teddy Bridgewater under center. Play fake, Bridgewater completes. Andrell Smith to near the 36. Coming up tonight from Atlanta, just two races left until the chase. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series in Atlanta. Carl Edwards needs a win. He described the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Heaven would look a lot like this racetrack. That's when he ends up with a win. And he's coming up tonight. As soon as we're done with Louisville and Kentucky, it's on to NASCAR in Atlanta. Second down carry, fighting through the hit. Jeremy Wright inside the 15, dives to the 10. Tough running for the junior from Claremont, Florida, Jeremy Wright. I think you have three or four missed tackles on that play, and tackling has been awful tonight. There's one. There's two. You're in perfect position. Keep your eyes up, head open. How about your head? Your eyes open and your head up. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're right there. Got to wrap them up. Screen to Scott Ratcliffe, the tight end. Well, Coach Holtz made a point at halftime. Lou Holtz talking about when you have a physical offense that makes your defense more physical and vice versa you have no choice I mean, when, when a team is pounding you in practice running the ball at you you get better at defending the run when the ball is thrown all the time and then you face a running team you don't see double team blocking and fullback blocking a lot jeremy wright again stretching just short of the goal line brought down at the one but louisville's knocking on the door again Cardinals will go hurry up on first and goal from the one. Right. Close. But appears to be just short. Second and goal. You know, last year, Kentucky had a couple of inside linebackers, Denny, Trevathan, and Winston Gay, who were really tough. But these youngsters are really getting worn out here today. Second and goal, it's a Louisville touchdown. Jeremy Wright into the end zone. Four touchdowns for the Cardinals, four rushing touchdowns for Louisville. 191 yards on the ground for Kentucky. rushing yards three touchdowns for Jeremy Wright Louisville had only one 100 rushing yard day a season ago that was Jeremy Wright over Rutgers first game of 2012 100 yards three touchdowns and the Cardinals are rolling runs in four sets today Kentucky football here trailing 32 to 7 now Trying to set up a screen that's incomplete. Smith intended for Williams. Kentucky's last two drives. First two are 110 yards. Last five, not so good. Now keep in mind, they have also used a fake punt and an onside kick. Smith, slant, 
complete. Collins makes the grab. That's the red shirt freshman. If you're looking for playmakers for this Kentucky offense, Daryl Collins is one of them. Red shirt freshman, Gadsden, Alabama. Crimson Tide wanted him, but they wanted him to gray shirt, which means enrolling a semester later. He declined, came to Kentucky instead. Smith on first down, flings it to Aaron Boyd near the 37. Well, Max Smith has played well at quarterback for Kentucky today. He's 19 of 30, the yards rolling over 150, but all the Kentucky fans are keeping an eye on number 14, the true freshman, Patrick Tolles. Mr. Football in the state of Kentucky, three-time state champs at Highlands High School in Fort Thomas. Huge recruit, quarterback of the future for the Kentucky Wildcats. And Big Blue Nation, Hoping perhaps he is ready. The, the coaching staff says that with all the potential in Patrick Tolles, he is still developing, still learning, not ready to take command as a true freshman yet. Re yeah. I don't think you'd want to put a true freshman out there with a blitzing defense like this. We've seen Smith get knocked around with the pressure and to ask a freshman to try to step out there and identify these blitzes that are coming way too much. Tolles is the grandson of Jim Bunning, the Hall of Fame pitcher in the United States Senate. Former United States Senate. That's complete. Daryl Collins. There's the red shirt freshman Collins to the 16. Injured as a true freshman, so he didn't get on the field a year ago. Making an impact now as a red shirt freshman. He says he's faster than Randall Cobb of the Packers. He used to play at Kentucky. He says he's a Faster player. Ducky fans hope so. It's complete again. Ooh, big hit on the outside from Terrell Floyd. Laying into the Rod King. Second and four from the ten. Complete again. King again. Dropped again. But he gets the first down. Calvin Pryor gets the hit, gets some talking to him. Well, they're in hurry up two minute offense now, and they need to get a score quickly, get the defense to get a stop, and have a shot of getting back. But they've got to get this score sooner rather than later. First and goal catch. Play fake. Smith, touchdown. There's the quick score. Larod King holds it in. 14th career touchdown grab for the senior from Radcliffe, Kentucky, Larod King. I think Smith is holding his elbow. I, I think he got hit at the end of that. Eight plays, 65 yards on the touchdown drive. McIntosh adds the PAT. Kentucky gets what it needs, a quick touchdown. Will Stein, the fifth-year senior, native of Louisville. He's a now University of Louisville alumnus. He's in the NBA program, is Will Stein. Play action on first down as Stein goes rolling. He will scramble out of bounds across the 25 for a positive game. What do you think about the QB change? Well, it makes some sense. Stein has really continued to be a leader on this team and deserves some playing time. Bridgewater has been outstanding. He managed a very efficient game, threw the ball well, played very smartly, and displayed his management skills as a quarterback today. So in the, the third quarter, do you think this is Charlie Strong just giving Teddy Bridgewater a break, working in Will Stein for a series, or? No, it, it lo looks to me like he's made the change. And I think he believes that you know, they can run the football, they can run the clock, but their defense gave up that last drive, but by and large, they've been in control. So unless something dramatically changes, I don't think we're gonna see Bridgewater again. Two minutes to go in the third. There's Stein completing to 
Damian Copeland. Now, even though Bridgewater has been terrific today, 19 of 21, it was Will Stein who had this job last year. It was Stein who got injured in the Kentucky game, second quarter, shoulder injury. So that essentially is when Teddy Bridgewater came in, won the game against Kentucky, ended up rallying Louisville to a share of the Big East title last year. So that's when Teddy Bridgewater took over the job. Well, there's another point to this, too. Couple more on first down from right. There are only 10 seniors on this Louisville team. And Will Stein was the starting quarterback last year, and he's continued to be one of the leaders. If you have that limited amount of leadership, you have to help support the guys who are your leaders. So for Stein to be a leader on this team, you got to get him on the field when he's earned that right. So you think this is less, hey, we've got command of this football game, with Stein throws on second and seven incomplete. You think this is less, we have command of this football game, it's time for Teddy Bridgewater to come out, than it is, let's get Will Stein, one of our leaders, on the field in the flow of this I, I think it's a combination of the two. I think they feel good they have control of the game, but I also think that they were probably always thinking they needed to find a spot to get him in because he has done everything they've wanted him to do, and they need seniors to lead, and you, it's hard to lead when you don't play at all. On third and seven, the bump, Stein's pass is caught, but down at the 40, that's Andrell Smith. So when he catches it, he's down at the 40. That means Louisville will punt. And you notice, they're just running their offense. They're running their regular pace and hurry up pace. They're not trying to just bleed the clock and end the game in the late third quarter. They're running their stuff, so they're treating Stein like, hey, this is just regular game type situation, go do it. That's the offensive coordinator, Sean Watson, who's uh, offensive coordinator in Nebraska for 2010. He and Charlie Strong really complimenting the way Will Stein handled the backup role. Brian Johnson hunts it away. Fair catch inside the 20, fielded by DeMarco Robinson. The teammates, young quarterback, a lot of respect for the veteran the job he took over in this game last year. That note on uh, 10 scholarship players on the roster for the University of Louisville, 10 seniors rather, on the roster for the University of Louisville. South Florida has 25, as you pointed out earlier, Rod. Charlie Strong was saying, picking us to win the league when they got 25 seniors. Skip holds his club. Williams and Sanders join Max Smith in the backfield. Williams motions. Smith throws the slant, complete to Aaron Boyd. Did Boyd fumble the football? He's down. Boyd's down right around the 34. You mentioned the 25 scholarships in South Florida. You know, it really matters. You take a look at the hit there. He's down before that ball comes out. This is a junior-senior sport. The more juniors, the more seniors you can play, the more experienced your team is, the more you know what you have. And right now, Kentucky knows that they've got a long way to go to get back in this ball game. Went to Lexington and won to snap that streak and retake the Governor's Cup. And unless Kentucky mounts a huge comeback here in the fourth, the Governor's Cup is gonna stay right here in Louisville. Beginning of the fourth quarter, this is first and 10 for Kentucky. Max Smith, the sophomore quarterback from Granada Hills, California, joined by Raymond Sanders, the third in the backfield. Smith to Sanders out of the backfield. Spinning away, Sanders gets to the 40. We still haven't seen Kentucky push the ball down the field. And that's one of the things that they said they really wanted to get better about and pushing it, and it hasn't happened. They've only taken a couple of small shorts a shot that around the 15-yard mark, but nothing deep. Motion on the line, no flag. Smith takes a sack as the Cardinal D hammers Max Smith. That's Calvin Pryor, the free safety, coming on the blitz. There is a flag down.
Offside, defense number 11. Five yard penalty results in a first down. So the offside was thrown. They've had trouble identifying the blitz all evening. Overload on this side, they don't see it. They have one back over there to pick it up. And Pryor comes free for the sack. They've had trouble identifying blitz pickup all afternoon. By design for Louisville, that's what Vance Bedford, Charlie Strong defense, exactly what they want to bring. On first down and 10. This is Raymond Sanders III, the junior from Stone Mountain, Georgia, keeping those legs churning across the 45 for a Kentucky first down. to the sideline again. Throwing on the run, complete. That's Boyd wrestled down right around the 42 yard line. To advance Bedford, the defensive coordinator for Louisville, he and Charlie Strong were together at the University of Florida. Charlie Strong's had four different stints as an assistant at the University of Florida. Worked with Charlie Pell, Galen Hall, Steve Spurrier, and Urban Meyer in four stints as an assistant at the University of Florida. That tells you how well respected he's been as a defensive-minded coach. Sanders inside the 30. Also an assistant at Texas A&M, Southern Illinois, Ole Miss, Notre Dame, South Carolina with Lou Holtz. And now the opportunity to build a program, doing a terrific job. Good friends with Urban Meyer. Certainly talks with him on a regular basis about the season challenges being a head coach. Smith complete to the outside. That's the Rod King spinning away inside the 10. King knocked out. Well, Kentucky trying to get back in this game, keeping up with the hurry-up offense, trying to score quickly as they did the last time they had the football. It's been deep and dunk for Kentucky all afternoon. Short passes here and there. They haven't been able to get big chunks of yardage. That's Terrell, uh, correction, Terrell Floyd was banged up on the tackle, but Calvin Pryor is the one who's hobbling right now. Both Floyd and Pryor slow after that last play. A number of players have had issues with cramps today. Humid early season. You'll see a lot of that early in the season because of the weather. Not being completely hydrated. So the free safety Calvin Pryor comes out and will be first in goal Kentucky. You know, with uh, more than 12 minutes left, a score here gives a little bit of life to Kentucky. They'd have a shot at getting back in it. First and goal. It's Smith and Williams in the backfield. Koshik Williams. Inside the five, second down and goal for the Cats. Hot, humid day, despite the rain. More cramping out there. Eight play of the drive for Kentucky. Williams again. Williams fumbles, Louisville recovers inside the five. Cardinals take it away and take away the Kentucky hope with 11.44 to go on the fourth. Adrian Bouchelle recovers the fumble. Just when there was a little bit of life, there is the hit. Was the knee down before it came out? Doesn't look Adrian Bouchelle recovers, and the Cardinals take over from 
in their own three. Will Stein back at quarterback, second series for the fifth year senior. In relief of Teddy Bridgewater, who's 19 of 21 in the game. Fifth year senior Stein left last year's Kentucky game with a shoulder injury when Bridgewater took over at QB. Under center. Handing off to Sonoris Perry. Maybe a yard. So not only two fumbles by Kentucky, both by the running backs, two fumbles as they were going into school, both inside the Louisville 30. Worst place you can turn it over. You know, you, you have to score somewhere around 75, 80% of the time when you're inside the 20-yard line. And turning it over just kills your offense. You contrast that with 199 rushing yards by Louisville, four touchdowns. Perry dropped near the goal line. If you check in with Reese. All right, Carter, a couple of races left until the chase for the championship. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to be in that race coverage as soon as football's over tonight, 630 Eastern. And don't forget about Major League Baseball, Sunday Night Baseball, White Sox, Tigers, a big one on ESPN2 tonight. That's hey, at 8 Eastern. Hey, and college football isn't done for the weekend. Reese and the guys will be back tomorrow. Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech tomorrow night. That's a big one, though. Potential ACC Coastal Division on the line. Potential. Nate Noor, fifth year senior tied in, makes the grab around the eight. So Louisville gets out of trouble out of the end zone, but here's the punting unit. It'll be a three and out. You, you set up the return or do you set up the block? You need a big play if you have any shot of getting back in here. This may be the good time to set up a return and really shorten the field. Ryan Johnson, the sophomore punter, will hit it. Hangs a good one up. DeMarco Robinson all the way back at the 46. Slips away from the first Louisville Cardinal down the field. Gets it back to the Louisville 46. Kentucky trying one more chance to scratch their way back in. <laughs> Referencing the Super Bowl. <laughs> Joe Namath's wild, uh, wild hair compared to Johnny Unitas. Here is a throwback. McCaskill's going to heave it long. It is patted away incomplete. So Kentucky goes with a trick play. Gene McCaskill trying to find DeMarco Robinson. Knocked away. That's why you keep a safety in the middle, and Louisville believes in that. They play their safety as deep as anyone's in college football. 15 to 20 yards deep on a regular basis. And he is the lighthouse that remains back there to make sure that all is safe in front. Calvin Pryor knocks that away, sniffing out the fake play by Kentucky. Now he'll move a little bit towards the center of the field on the snap, but they keep him back there, and he's supposed to clean up anything that becomes an issue. Smith, dragging receiver complete. Daryl Collins, the redshirt freshman, knocked out around the 30. You know, in this day and age where a lot of teams get eight guys in the box and you get a lot of pressure, a lot of teams move their safety out of the middle. As we see more players. That's Terrell Floyd again. Yeah, well, once you get started with the cramps, mm -hmm. they're not going to go away that game. You're just, you just got to try and fight through it, but it's going to be a day or two before you get beyond it. But there are some old school coaches who believe you never take your free safety out of the middle. You're just inviting the offense to take a shot down the middle of the field when you move that safety out of there. But Louisville believes that they will always keep that guy back there. You agree? It's a, as a corner, when you play corner, it's nice to know that there's someone back there just in case you need a little help. There's Vance Bedford, the defensive coordinator for the Louisville Cardinals, who says, we are a pressure team. Yeah, he says in the NFL, the safety stays home, and so his guy's gonna stay home. Koshik Williams inside the 20. Now, Vance Bedford worked at Michigan, didn't work for Bo Schembechler, but said that was uh, very much a part of the defensive philosophy at Michigan and Coach Schembechler. Keep that safety deep. Uh, it's one question you don't have to answer. Where was the safety? 
How about that play? Collins makes the grab, but then uh, Jermaine Reese, the true freshman from guess where, Miami Northwestern High School. All that time. Charlie Strong coached in Florida has come in handy with connections and recruiting in Florida. Heavy pressure coming. Smith throws through the blitz, incomplete. Intended for EJ Fields. You know what we haven't seen from Kentucky is a lot of DeMarco Robinson. And a small receiver, number nine, that they've tried to make into a playmaker. He's not on the field right now, but they need more plays out of out of guys like that. Only two catches for DeMarco Robinson. Third and long. Screen through the all-out blitz. LaRod King is wrestled down at the 19-yard line by Hakeem Smith, the junior who has grown into a leader for this Louisville Cardinals defense. It was two years ago when he first got on the field against Kentucky. Didn't expect much out of him, but he has led this Louisville D. Now facing fourth and nine. Blitz again. Through the blitz again. Collins makes the grab, but he is well short of the first down. Hakeem Smith and Jermaine Reeve there on the stop. It is Louisville football with an 18-point lead. It's all red in Louisville. Staying in Louisville, Kentucky, not rolling back to Lexington with a catch. It is 32-14, Cardinals on Kentucky. Will Stein is back out for his third series as the Louisville quarterback, the fifth-year senior. Two series, two punts with Will Stein as QB after a great day by Teddy Bridgewater. Sonoris Perry, no gain on first down. Let's look at the upcoming schedule for the Louisville Cardinals. And tell me where the pitfalls are. Well, you know, once they get into the season, you you got that road trip, three straight games, Florida International beat them last year. But it really starts to become tricky when you start talking about South Florida. I mean, those are the two teams that seem best positioned to win the Big East. And if the Big East is going to make a lot of noise this year, one of those programs has to step up and be in the national discussion. Louisville pick to win the Big East. They shared the title last year. Perry on second down, makes it third down. We check in with Reese Davis. Carter, just a quick programming reminder as we head for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Two uh, races left to go before the chase. Third and six for Will Stein and Louisville. Option, toss, Perry across the 20, first down Cardinals. Perry out of bounds near the 30. So this is the first time with Will Stein at quarterback that Louisville has moved the chains. And you can hear some discomfort among the Louisville fans with uh, Will Stein out there at quarterback. The offense slowing down after Teddy Bridgewater had been so terrific. What do you think about the decision to play Will Stein here in the second half? I, I have no problem with it. I mean, this is a guy who was a starter last year. And you want to make sure that you keep him involved in the game. And like I said, he's one of the few seniors that's trying to help lead this team. Cut back from Shanoris Perry, the junior from Somerville, Georgia. And if Louisville is going to have a special season, those seniors, the 10 seniors that they have, starters or not, are going to play an important role. This is a very young team, very young team. And I think Charlie Strong has tried to downplay the, the talent a little bit. He says, you know, next year this team will really be mature, will be ready for big things. But this team may be good enough this year to win the Big East.
Perry gets it again on second down. Sonoris Perry rolling outside, ridden out of bounds right around the 40. The Governor's Cup taking Is that the position. way you pack a cup? A large one? Cup? Large one. There's some fans who pack some different cups, different ways coming into the stadium today, I guarantee. I don't think those are governor's cups. Five seconds on the play clock for Stein from the 40 as Louisville tries to run the football, run the clock, run out the governor's cup win. That's Jeremy Wright again on first down. Sure enough. Yeah, there you go. That's, now, how comes there, there's not any bubble wrap? The brackets. That's a pretty big cut. It's kind of like a magic act, like they're going to saw it in half and then reattach it. <laughs> Every year, somebody breaks it. Too. Stein, pressure, drop, third down coming. Now, the Governor's Cup, this is brought back in 1994 to renew this football rivalry between Kentucky and Louisville. 70 years between meetings. Went from 1992 to 1994. Since the resumption in 1994, when they started playing football again, the Wildcats and the Cardinals, Louisville leads 10 to 8. They won last year after Kentucky had claimed four straight Governor's Cups. Now, do they have a cup for the basketball game? You know, I'm not... Kentucky and Louisville play in basketball for everything. They play for, well, last year, special year, both teams going to the Final Four. Kentucky winning it. Stein has tipped as he throws. Fourth down coming up here, intended for Devontae Parker. Well, Kentucky, at least on the, the football side of things, they've got to find a way to get the ball down the field. Scoring 14 points here today is not going to make a lot of Kentucky fans happy considering they averaged about what, 15 points a game last season. This doesn't get them back to where they want to be. Well, Kentucky's going to get it again here with 316 and the result of the game. All Louisville, good punt by Appleby, the freshman, Robinson. From the 15, Robinson wrestled down from the behind right around the 20 yard line. 303 to go. What does this loss mean for Kentucky football? We'll discuss. Loser of that uh, central might be on the outside looking in. And the Baltimore Orioles in the AL East as well. So a lot on the line tonight with a great pitching matchup. Sunday Night Baseball is on ESPN 2 tonight. NASCAR from Atlanta on ESPN next. Smith slant compete to DeMarco Robinson complete near the 30. Rod, I want to ask you, what does this loss mean for Kentucky football? What a question. Thank you. You know, they've got to find a way to get things going offensively. With, with the changes in the SEC, Missouri and AM coming in, it, it's even more competitive for them now. And they have to find a way to become relevant in football in the SEC. I think. I think the notion that they need to throw the ball and be like they were, I think I think they do have to be different than the power running teams in the SEC. I think that's going to be their ident identity. But they've got to play better defense, and they, they have to be in concern now that a team like Vanderbilt is above them. And Vandy has... And Vanderbilt looked pretty good on Thursday Yeah, night. Vandy's picked up the pace there, so... Uh, they can't afford to fall behind Vandy, have Missouri come in, have Texas A&M come in, and then it looks like you're really losing ground. They have to find a way to get back to a bowl this season. Pass interference spot foul to the 34. Smith completes again. Jonathan George, the junior from Alabama, out of the backfield is absolutely leveled as soon as he gets the football. And I would say this about Kentucky. I see things on their offense that can give, give me hope that They'll score more points. I'm more concerned about their defense right now. Smith 
279, two touchdowns. It was really the two fumbles by the running backs, both inside the Louisville 30, that afforded any comeback possibility for Kentucky today. Rolling near two minutes, Smith heaves it incomplete. Yeah. City, they, they don't have a mid-range passing game right now because they can't protect the quarterback. But on defense, they can't stop the run, and they can't pressure the quarterback. And that's a bad recipe for getting to the SEC. Uh, two, speaking of the SEC and the new additions, two uh, big games in week two involving Missouri and Texas A&M. Get to those in just a moment. Smith, screen complete. That's Mobley who has dropped fourth down coming. You will have Florida going to Texas A&M and Georgia going to Missouri to welcome those two new members of the SEC in the two biggest games of week two, along with Washington and LSU. Game day will be at the Florida-Texas A&M game. And Florida certainly plays defense. I'm not sure that their offense is on track yet. Didn't look like it yesterday against Bowling Green. Incomplete, Louisville takes over. Well, Texas A&M, I can tell you this, Kyle Field will be SEC ready. That will be an SEC environment. It will be a crazy environment next Saturday for their first SEC game, their opener after Louisiana Tech was postponed. But that's an, that's an SEC defense showing up to play. Going up against the new quarterback for Texas A&M, Johnny Manziel, who was outstanding high school quarterback at Kerrville, Tybee High School, the Antlers. Johnny Manziel was a big time quarterback who will start as a redshirt freshman in their first SEC. Look at, that, look at that antler knowledge. I like that. I'm telling you, Ron, one thing you gotta learn Tybee fight never dies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not gonna comment anything no, about no, any other. No, uh, no, no. Stein under center trying to run the football, run the clock. Keep the Governor's Cup safely here in Louisville, Kentucky. Toss to Perry, dropped at the 45. Still more one big college football game on the ESPN Network system. Really settled in the quarterback. Big things expected out of him. He's certainly coming up on the all the draft boards as a hot quarterback prospect. 12 men in the huddle. Five yard penalty. Second down. So I will be looking for that text from you somewhere late first quarter, early second quarter about, aha, I see Virginia Tech starting to settle in against the option a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a uh, Virginia Tech defense. It should be really good, but difficult test against the triple option. Paul Johnson, triple option for Georgia Tech. I mentioned the ACC quarterbacks, Logan Thomas, Mike Glennon, Taj Boyd, three really good ones in that league this year. I tell you, Teddy Bridgewater is pretty good. So Teddy Bridgewater in an abbreviated outing to begin 2012. 19 of 21, 232 yards. The sophomore from Miami leads Louisville to a 32 to 14 win. Although the ground attack with 223 rushing yards on the day for Louisville and four touchdowns. The former colleagues and friends, Joker Phillips and Charlie Strong, meet at midfield. The Governor's Cup remains with the Louisville Cardinals. They win it 32 to 14 over Kentucky. For Rod Gilmore, Jamel Hill, our entire hardworking ESPN crew, I'm Carter Blackburn. Louisville wins it over Kentucky 32 to 14 to get 2012 started. Leading up to today's enormous rivalry game, there was talk of a torrential downpour and possibly a promising performance from Kentucky. Well, neither happened. Instead, the cards reign supreme, securing the Governor's Cup for the second straight year. Let's check out what happened today. The cards going through smoke, the fans sitting through rain, drizzled, but I'm telling you, when that ball was kicked off, dry. Louisville sat back on their own one, and Teddy unleashes a 23-yard rocket. Yes, to Damian Copeland, a 99-yard drive. Teddy went 19 for 21 of the day. Jeremy Wright pounds this one in. They would go for two, rubbing it in. The Cards take an 8-0 lead. UK, they come down themselves, and they go all the way down. Nice play-action pass right there to Tyler Robinson for the touchdown. We are close at 8-7. 
and then the cards begin to pull away. Next drive, no time wasted. Six plays in, Sonoris Perry, 47 yards to the house. Cards up 50, 15 to seven. The Cards third drive of the first half, the very next one, their third touchdown. Jeremy Wright, a 14 yard run for a touchdown. U of L up 22 to seven at the half. So to start the second half, UK goes for a surprise, an onside kick, they get it. But the drive stalled when they missed a field goal. The Cards made a field goal, so now it's 25-7, and UK goes for a fake punt, and that's snipped out as well. Questionable call there. U of L gets the ball, so that next drive, guess who? Jeremy Wright, one yard touchdown. He finished with 105 yards and three touchdowns. What a day for him. UK though, Teddy is now on the bench, and they begin coming back. Max Smith finds Lerod King with three minutes left in the third. Plenty of time to then drive down to the five, and Koshik Williams. Fumbles. That would have been a one possession game, and there would have been a lot of questions for Coach Strong. But I'm telling you, Louisville looked fantastic today. They win 32 to 14. They keep the Governor's Cup, and they dominated by the numbers. Check out these statistics. Yes, Teddy goes 19 of 21 for 232. An incredible day for him. Rushing 46 carries for 219 yards. U of L dominated on the ground, and time of possession. Almost doubling them up. U of L dominated this game. Ken Spencer has more from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Early in the week, Teddy Bridgewater was caught singing karaoke on campus. He was a very loose quarterback coming into this game, and Bridgewater and company certainly played a tune on Kentucky's defense, capturing the Governor's Cup for a second straight year. Victory is sweet. Just watch who you're snatching the trophy from. I didn't even know that was the governor. I just saw the trophy and just ran to it. I was like, oh, okay, we're going. It feels good to have the state bragging rights because it's our state championship game. So to have that trophy, it just feels good to have it back here for another year. The Cards offense toyed with Kentucky's defense. It did, but, you know, it's all due to the offensive line. You know, those guys open holes. It starts with the run game and it starts up front. Since we executed that in practice, it was just, uh, it came natural. But uh, I definitely think it uh, took their pride. It's just amazing to watch how we just clicked today on offense. Teddy Bridgewater having an unbelievable day. Having two running backs to rush the ball for over 100 yards. And I told the, our team, I said, I have to give credit to our offensive line because they did a great job of blocking up front. And they don't get any credit. It was also clear the Cats expected a much better performance. It's tough. Just want to say sorry to the fans, the Kentucky fans. You know, thanks for the support you guys gave. Fortunately, we couldn't get the result we wanted. We're a lot better than this. I know we're better than this. And we're, we're going to overcome, you know, this challenge that we did today. We, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get better. For the cards, consider it point proven. Well, it just says that we're hungry, but, you know, like our shirt says, you know, you stay hungry, but you also have to stay humble. <laughs>